One more, Natalie. Thanks. How does your community service storyline align with your business story? And what value do you place on the communication of your service work to employees, customers, shareholders, and others? Is that for everybody? John, we'll let you start with that one. Well, it's inextricably linked. I mean, it, we're a global company, and we're competing in lots of markets, and we have to be a global citizen <laughs> and a member of too many to count global communities. So for us, it's, it's the only way forward. And, and so there's, a, there's not only a perfect match, but it's a required match. And, and, and we talk about it, but we talk about it really to give, as much to give credit to our employees who do this. You know, we, they volunteer, yes, uh, but they understand that their, their first charge is to deliver for customers and shareholders. So, so while they'll take time during the day to do different things, in the end, they, they, they might have to make it up at night just because there's a big project or something. And so when we talk about 90,000 volunteers, these are, these are people who are, who are really finding time to do it and, and still get up every day thinking about customers and shareholders, which is, which is what keeps us in business. Jack, any thoughts? Um, I, I think the biggest thing is that it, it's really simple. You know, when, 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 you're, when you're volunteering and, and, and when you're going through the service, talk about it and, and share it uh, and, and, you know, really get people into the conversation. And, and for, for a corporation or an organization, I, I think it's important that that, that sharing and, and that doing comes from the very top, but also the very top is constantly surfacing what the entire organization is doing, from the individual employee to, to programs to groups, and, and you know, it's constantly being broadcasted and, and shared in real time what is, is happening, and, and on, on the same level of, of every other message. You know, every, every employee, every member of that organization should feel supported in, in their work, and I, you know, I think that's, uh, I think that's one of the, the greatest benefits of these tools is that you can, you can encourage people to use them to share what they're doing every single day. I think, uh, you know, financial literacy, uh, and I think of that as uh, one of our jobs. Uh, so if we live by the credo that we're in business to do what's best for our customers, and, and in that process, uh, we will have our employees fully leverage our tools to get the benefit of uh, getting ultimately a return for our shareholders. And we live and work in communities, and we pride ourselves as being a great financial services firm, then in fact, financial literacy is our job. Um, and I, I've watched firsthand and seen firsthand um, going to a community and allowing ourselves to be able to help a bunch of parents understand financial literacy for their children who are students to be able to get them to college and then watch that cycle of those kids come out of college and come to work for us. And you realize um, that there's nothing more important than using whatever your strongest asset is, and as Al, it should be financial prowess, to bring into your neighborhoods. And out of that, you know, is its own form of viral marketing that comes right back to the firm and brings back the next set of customers. And in some cases, you know, my dream is it's the next set of leaders for the firm, too. So I think it is a very uh, circular activity if uh, you in business to serve your customers and believe that you're going to use your best tools to help your communities, that uh, your employees will see it, it will market itself, and you will gain the benefit of it. One last question. This is almost a business school class up here. We have two Fortune 50 companies. We have a gentleman, the way he's going, will certainly be on the Fortune 25 list very soon, the gentleman in the middle. But the people sitting in the audience are representing much smaller organizations. They're representing not-for-profits. The last 18 months for big companies have been brutal. The last 18 months for 
small community-based organizations have also been extremely difficult. What are the lessons learned that can be taken from corporate America into the not-for-profit world and that could help a lot of these individuals as they look over their budgets and their business plans for the next year, the next two years? I think uh, first and foremost, focus, focus, focus. Uh, you know, stick to what is your core competency and uh, make sure you're developing it as well as possible. Um, everything can be done better, always. You know, there's nothing uh, that you can't. And uh, reach out to partners because they need as much help as you need many times and there are strategic alliances that can really help you or just good thought processes. Uh, more people want to help each other, as we know right here, than don't. So uh, don't be scared to pick up the phone and call somebody for help. Jack? Uh, I, th I think the, the biggest thing that, that I've seen work and, and I think has been uh, um, underutilized is design. Um, and, and potentially even hiring a designer full time within the organization to, to really bring a stark and, and, and bold and simple message to what the organization is doing, what the nonprofit is doing. I think that, that it, just, it, it makes it just so easy to, to approach that, that, that work. Um, and it, it kind of sells the service itself. If you have a really good, a, a very well-designed um, website and well-designed communication and, and well-designed advertisements or, or some sort of outreach or, or programs, it takes all the questions away. And, and you can focus on that, that very simple message which sparks the interaction that you want. Um, and, and I think we, we could all look at design a lot more and, and really simplifying the message. It's just so easy to build and build and build on, on top of you know, these, these messages and very quickly you, you complicate everything you're trying to do. Um, but it, it needs to start with that, that simple one-liner and, and, and some very inspiring and arresting images that, that you know, capture and engage. John, final thoughts? You know, in our world, John, uh, the leaders who do the best are people who do what they say they're going to do and demonstrate that they're effective stewards of our resources and they find ways to do more with less. And I'm not so sure that the same requirement doesn't exist for all of you, especially in this world where we're challenged by maybe having fewer resources to work with or contributions that have been cut. How do you show that you really are doing what you say you're going to do and trying to do more with less, finding ways to collaborate, sharing backroom activities with other nonprofit organizations so that you become a better investment for the companies that, or the individuals that are supporting you? Very good. Ladies and gentlemen, let's thank John and Jack. And Frank. Gentlemen, thank you very, very much.